So first of all, if you're going to build a uh, nutrition plan for somebody, where do you start? How do you determine how much protein they need, how many carbs they need, how much fat they need? Just how do you do that? Body weight, Mark. Body weight, lean body mass. Do you guys use any like equations? Do you have any mathematical formulas that you use? Catch McCardle. Catch McCardle. Fits your macros. You just fits your Okay. Um, I think that people put way too much time into analyzing and making and creating the perfect starting diet. The perfect start, perfect starting diet is only going to work for probably a couple weeks anyway. Then it'll need to be adjusted. So what I what I tell people is just put together a sensible plan and get your clients started. Making a sensible plan, number one, has to be doable. So if I'm working in a corporate environment, does it make sense for me to have to cook steak and rice three times a day? Am I gonna tell my boss in a meeting, hey, can you give me 20, I gotta go hit my steak and rice. You're not gonna do that, you need to build, for, so you need to build a plan that's actually doable. And I know that sounds silly, but I can't tell you how many times coaches send cookie cutter plans, whether it's a stay-at-home mom or a corporate executive or somebody working in sales that's on the road. You have to understand the person. You have to understand what they do day to day, what their, what their, job, what their job's like, what they do with their time. You have to understand those things. That's the number one thing you have to consider first when you build a plan, because you have to make it actually doable. You're going to take away the excuse that people use and say, well, this didn't work. Because when they do that, you've already done your homework up front and you know it actually is doable. You know, when I worked in the corporate world, I had breakfast, and then I went to work. At 10 o'clock, I had a protein shake. And if I was in a meeting, I put it in a Starbucks cup and everybody thought I was drinking Starbucks. And then I would have lunch. I would bring my lunch or I'd have lunch there. Three o'clock, I'd have another protein shake in my Starbucks cup. I'd come home, I would eat, I'd train. Then I'd come home and eat again and I'd go to bed. It's the easiest diet in the world to follow. But how many times do you hear corporate, people in the corporate world say, I'm too busy to follow a diet? That's crap. No, you're not. You just have to use the right choices. Sometimes you may have to use a, a protein shake. If you're on the road, you mean you can't, you can't pack some nuts? You can't take some rice cakes? You can't take a couple packs of tuna or whatever? There's ways around everything. So take the excuses away from people before they can even make them. Make their diets so simple to follow that anybody can follow it. That's number one, okay? Now, in terms of um, mathematical formulas, I have, I have formulas that I use, but I'm not overly enamored with them. Um, the plan always adjusts anyway within a couple weeks. For protein, you can argue with me all day whether it should be lean body mass or body weight. I don't care. I just use body weight. Uh, I use their body weight times one for most women and 1.25 for most men. Pounds? Pounds. Pounds. Yeah, not kilos. Pounds. <laughs> so for example, I would have 100 grams of protein. No, not, not kilos. Pounds. So 1.25 for males and one for females is generally what I... And now, don't worry about how much of it's... If, if somebody has less muscle and more body fat, it's going to give them a little extra protein. That's all right. A little extra protein isn't going to kill them. Um, for fat, this is protein. For fat, I like 0.4 for males and females. 0.4 grams per pound. So let's do the math here. Let's say you were 100, you go by kilos over here, right? So if you were 100 kilos, you'd be, if this is a male, if you're a male, you're 100 kilos, you're 220 pounds times 0.4 would be how many grams of fat? You have 40, 40 grams for your first 100, 80 grams for 200 pounds. So you'd be like, you'd be somewhere around, we'll say 90 grams of fat. If it was a 100 kilo female, she's gonna be half that, she's probably like 45. These numbers may or, not be, may or may not be perfect for your client, but they're gonna be close. They're gonna be close. Where did you get that from, the, uh, that recommendation? That recommendation, over the years, just practice, experience. I didn't read that anywhere. A lot of people will put males on much higher levels of protein than I do. I don't find that's necessary. 
and it also creates, in my opinion, a lot of digestive issues. Yeah, what about the fat though? The fat, I don't, first of all, I don't like low fat diets unless somebody has maybe an impaired ability to create bile salts and I can't break down fat, but outside of medical reasons, I don't also don't think you, I also don't think you need an excessive amount of fat either. I think that's a pretty good number. And that's going to be, you know, percentage of their calories. You know, it might be 25-30% of their calories. So it's not real high, but it's not real low either. So did you say real high stresses the liver with Well, now if you want to get into that discussion, then you're talking about the type of fat. Yeah. All fats don't behave equally in your body. Yeah. <coughs> and are you counting this as added? Like, do you count this fat in a steak, or you don't even count the fat if you added fats to it? If you eat fat in a steak, does your body have to digest it and use it? Yeah. And I count it. The only thing I don't count is green vegetables. You mean as carbs, right? Yeah, I don't, I don't count them as calories, period. Yeah. I don't count green beans. If you look at insoluble fiber, it's insoluble. Zero calories. Your body can't use it. All it does is push waste through your body and out your digestive system, okay? Soluble fiber, actually, there actually is a mathematical formula. There actually is calories per gram, and it's around two. You know, normal carbohydrates, four. It's actually around two, but I don't, I don't, I'm not worried about that. I've never seen anybody get fat from eating too much broccoli, so I don't, I don't worry about that. But other, but other ones, like I count the protein that's in peanut butter, I count the protein that's in oatmeal, I count the fat that's in lean meats, I do count all that stuff. Because when you start making changes, you've got to be very precise, and the closer we get to a contest type situation, the more precise you have to be, okay? All right, so the only thing you have left is carbs. Um, now, you have to do a little bit of math here because the first place that I, the, the place that precedes this is you need to figure out a total amount of calories for the person. And there's all kinds of equations out there for that. There's a ton of them. I like to use body weight times 12, 13, 14, 15, or 16 based on the person's metabolism. If you have a sky, sky high metabolism, I might take your body weight in pounds and multiply it by 16. If you have a low metabolism, I might multiply it by 12. You get, I, I like to adjust that formula based on the person, what I, I, just, the abil, just for their ability to burn calories. If they're burning faster calories, I set it higher. If they don't appear to have that, if they don't appear to have a really fast metabolism, I set it lower. Does that depend whether it's fat loss or hypertrophy is the goal though? Yeah, everybody wants to lose fat and gain muscle. So I mean, that's what about trying to do both. You always want to try to do both. Whether you can or not is the tough part, but you always want to try to do both. Unless somebody tells you, I don't want to gain any muscle. I don't have that experience because nobody comes to me and says, I want you to help me out, but I don't want to gain any muscle. You know? <laughs> so, um, but again, if the right answer for you would have been 15 instead of 16, we're nitpicking, just get on a plan and get to work. So let's say you had 3,000 calories. Whatever your calories was as a result of this formula, that's how many calories you're going to left, have left to, to cover in carbs. So let's, let's, um, let's just throw some fake numbers out here. Let's say you're 200 pounds and I think you have a fast metabolism, so I'm going to use six, uh, let's just make it easy and say 15, 3,500 calories. So 200 pounds times 15, uh, that's 3,500, right? Okay, now we used 1.25 for protein. Is it, is it How much is it? 3,000. Three? Yeah. Is my math off there? Is it 3,000? Yeah. Okay. I was giving you a lot of extra calories. So we'll say 3,000. And protein, we had 1.25 times 200. So what's that? That's 250. 250? Is that right? 250? So 250 grams, so that's 1,000 calories. So you have 1,000 there. Fat, we did 0.4. So 80, 80 times uh, 9, right? 720. So now we got 1,720. So we have 3,000 minus 1,720. 1,280. 1, so now we got to cover 1,280 calories in carbs. 3, 320. And I think that's a pretty, 
that's pretty balanced, right? That's not sky high carbs, it's not sky high fat, it's not rock bottom low either. That's what I would call a good balanced diet. That's where I like to start people. And you can play around with this first number, whether it's 12 or 13 or 14 or 15, that's where experience is. You're gonna learn by experience what numbers to start with. And if you're off 10%, that's okay. Just get, get somebody on a plan and get a movement. Now, where do you put, where do you put these other 320 grams of carbs? I like to put, for somebody who's trying to really aggressively burn body fat, I like to put 80% of them around training. Peri-workout. When I say peri-workout, I mean pre, intra, and post. So what's 80% of 320? Eighty, two forty. It's going to be probably something like around two hundred fifty, right? So you're going to have about two hundred fifty grams of carbs to work with around peri workout. That's going to leave you seventy grams of carbs for other meals. You can put them wherever you want. If somebody prefers to have carbs for breakfast, let them have carbs for breakfast. If they prefer to have them at another meal, again, you want them to stick to the plan. So work with them, help them out. Where do you prefer to have carbs? You want to have carbs with your family at dinner? Put them there. Not really a big deal. You can't, don't fight people on where to put them. It's the plan has to work for them. If somebody, um, they're, not, they're not so enamored with aggressively burning body fat, then you know you could use 60% around training and spread the rest of it out. I think it goes up. I think you have pre-workout, you know, your pre-workout, you're right here. Intra workout, you're right here. And then post workout, you're right here. I think the scale slides up. I don't want a lot of, I don't want a ton of cars before you work out. I don't, but I do like, if you're going to put them somewhere post workout, I think is a better fit. So I'm going to do this with pre, intra and post. Does that make sense? Again, that's just logical thinking. This isn't rocket science, this is just logical thinking. And on non-training days, would you just split the 320 evenly or? Non-training days, I usually just take out the intro workout. Yeah. And you might wanna, you know, instead of giving them all those carbs post-workout, you might just wanna spread it out, just common sense. But their carbs will be lower on a non-training day. Now a lot of people will say, but you wanna facilitate the recovery process, so their day's off, the day afterwards is where you want your calories higher. Not with the model we're using, because remember, we managed muscle protein breakdown while it happened. We didn't wait too long. The person's already sore the next day. And the day after that, it's even worse. So that doesn't apply to what we're doing. So now, this is how we build a plan. 